All right, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, soon enough. Thank you for tuning in today. Today is going to be a portal day. It's going to be all about the transfer portal, and maybe we can help you understand it a little bit, and the fact that it is never-ending is playing a role in the transfer portal. So stick around to the Locked On Ole Miss podcast for more of that. You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. Today is Portal Day. We're going to talk about the portal, including um, somebody that may have joined um, the Ole Miss class through the portal recently. We're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to talk about um, how the portal actually works, how it's set up, and the negatives that happen whenever you try to cover it, like recruiting or something like that. Anyway... Today's episode is brought to you by NetSuite. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on as NCAA for special end of year financing on the number one financial system for a growing business. Um, That is netsuite.com. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about the transfer portal today. That's what this show is going to be about. We're going to talk about what it is, how it works how it's covered, um, some potential targets for Ole Miss down the road. And finally, at the end of the show, we're going to talk about what Ole Miss is going to do for the quarterback position. Now, this is all guesses because there's not really any sources. That's the amazing thing about this. There are no sources because the coaching staff is not talking. And the coaching staffs that basically break portal information um, they're feeding information to the reporting staff because the circle is so small when it comes to a portal player that it's kind of hard just to get information. There's not a lot of people talking. So you end up with a situation like what's gone on at Ole Miss for the last two weeks when they just don't know what's going on. They don't have any real sources Nobody's talking about what's going on, but they have assumptions and they try to connect dots and do whatever they can to do reporting because it's expected of them to break the story before it happens. And in something like this, they just can't. Is it their fault? No, not really. But um, the expectation that these things are going to be broken by these pay sites is causing a narrative of panic among their people because as soon as the season was over, they released an, a list of the top five quarterbacks that Ole Miss is going through. And every time a quarterback goes into the portal, to our knowledge, the only quarterback that has visited Ole Miss's campus is Cam Ward. He's visited and nothing's happened. So common sense would tell you that they're probably pretty far down the road on that. But... Other quarterbacks that might have things, the Dylan Gabriel, Jeff Levy connection, um, the Spencer Radler connection. There's a lot of people that tried to connect dots on this. But the circle is so small. And I think recruits learn after recruiting to keep that circle small because the recruiting process becomes a zoo, an absolutely zoo for prospects. And they have to go through, especially highly ranked prospects, somebody like a Spencer Rattler or somebody like that. So when they enter the transfer portal, it's a very small thing. It, in many cases, it's a one or two person <coughs> decision team. Sorry about that. And since it's a small decision team, there's not as many ways for it to leak out, especially when the coaching staff is not feeding information to people. So the point of the matter is, in this transfer portal thing, people may talk about, hey, Ole Miss needs to do this, or Ole Miss needs to do that, or it's struggling here, or this is what we need here, or why is not this happening? The fact of the matter is, they don't know the original plan. 
they're completely guessing on the original plan. And they're trying to come across as if they're in the know. You can trust what they say is going on. But the fact of the matter is, just like with the coaching carousel, you can blanket deny every rumor they put out. Doesn't matter if it's true or not. You can blanket deny it, and you're going to be right 90% of the time. Because truth doesn't necessarily matter. Fact doesn't necessarily matter anymore. What do they say? We're in a post-truth world? And it doesn't have to be true anymore. It just has to be said. It just has to be said. And said by somebody other than you. And you can run with that and post that information and that nugget, and there's no chance of it going to become true. So, the transfer portal, you have a high up player that has gone through the recruiting process and saw the circus that that became. When he transfers, he wants to keep that circle as small as possible and the coaching staff is not talking at Ole Miss. If they say, anybody says they are, they're not. And it's because, honestly, the media has burned Lane Kiffin so often in the past that he just doesn't trust them, especially the local guys because of what went on at USC. So you have that. And then you have a transfer portal situation that is never ending. When a recruiting process and a signing day, it ends on February 2nd or 3rd or whatever the first Wednesday in February is, um, or the early signing period. There is no end point to this. This goes on. So everybody's saying Ole Miss needs to act now. Ole Miss needs to... Um, not get left behind. Why? There's more players that are going to jump into this. If your chosen player that you see is not as good as Luke Altmyer playing quarterback, why would you not wait to see who else comes in? And then if um, nobody better than Luke Altmyer comes in, in the summer you sign basically a backup for Luke Altmyer. This isn't hard. I get that in this era of instant gratification that we have that the portal kind of seems weird because we want something now. Well, you look who all is in there, determine who can help you. And the methodical approach to the portal and coaching carousel has led to like nearly a 100% success rate on converting to both for Lane Kiffin. So why would he change that now just because somebody is impatient. Think about that. There are several people that want, it's like, oh, we need to pick up. No, he's not going to do this on your schedule. When you look at a portal quarterback or any position, it's look at him and determine if he can, if he is better than what you currently have. If the answer is no, then the answer is wait. People need to understand that. Now, there's going to be other quarterbacks that pop into the quarter portal. And you can take that guy this summer. You might not be able to find one that's as good as Luke Altmyer. See, also, there's a narrative that has developed around this that Luke Altmyer isn't going to be the guy. He's not good enough to be the guy. He's not ready. Why? Who says? I saw a kid um, come in against Auburn that was incredibly poised. That went 6-6 six of six passing and was leading the team down the field as a true freshman in one of the most hostile stadiums in the SEC. So, know that that series opened some eyes for this staff. Know that. Know that whenever you look at transfer portal players, you look at what you have and if that person can help you. Now, it's different for like a wide receiver, and we're going to talk about um, a wide receiver in just a second. Um, it's different with a defensive lineman. It's different with a linebacker. I mean, we've already had um, Tennyson that is signed in the defensive backfield, which is kind of the Otis Reese replacement. So... 
know that the portal is a little bit different for each position, unlike recruiting, which everything is pretty much the same. Know that your current roster is playing more of a role against the portal than recruiting because you have to sign a quarterback pretty much every recruiting class regardless. I think that since they didn't sign one this year, I think Arch Manning is actually um, being used against Ole Miss with these multi-year quarterbacks. I, I, I think it's happening. I mean, does it make sense? No, not really. But, I mean, just as we've seen in the last several years, they're going to negative recruit this. And they're going to set this up to where it is a beneficial thing for them. So that that's kind of how the portal works. It is a never-ending process. It just keeps going where the media have no sources because of tight circles and coaching staffs that um, choose not to talk. And since there's no signing date and it's, it is infinite, there, it goes on. There's another group, another group, another group, another group that will enter the portal. So it's not something that can be covered. It's not really something that can be ranked. <clears throat> This is all about system fit. A player that is at Louisville might fit what's going on at Ole Miss. A player that's playing defensive back at Auburn may be the perfect fit for Ole Miss. Ole Miss runs the 3-6 defense. Um, Derek Mason runs a 3-4 at Auburn. So it might be a little similar, but it's going to be a little different as the outside backers are going to play a little bit different because they're defensive backs in this this system. So just know that you're trying to pick and choose pieces that fit what you're doing. Know that if Ole Miss calls you, they deem you a fit to do that. Now, whenever we talk about Cam Ward, everybody's going, nobody's talking about Cam Ward at the moment, but 30 minutes after he entered the portal, Lane Kiffin called him. That is the factual piece that nobody else can say. Now, they're going to say that these things are preordained. They're not. Um, there are going to be some players that enter the transfer portal knowing where they're going to go. A small fraction of players. Most of it is impetuous youth. And they enter the portal, and sometimes there's nowhere for them to go. Or you have to drop down. You might be a DB on an SEC team, and next thing you know, you're playing FCS ball. It is what it is. So just understand what's going on. That's how the portal works. Now, we're going to talk about some um, portal fits when we come back from this break. Um, but... Um, this is how the portal works. This is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours, but on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software? To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. Over 27,000 businesses already use NetSuite, and right now, through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program to those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked on NCA. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on NCA for your special end-of-year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. That's netsuite.locked on. Um, that's netsuite.com slash locked on NCA. So you give them some, give give those guys a good look. They're the number one cloud financial system that will help power your growth, and basically, it's a pretty good deal. So give them a call. NetSuite.com slash locked on NCAA. All right, welcome back to our transfer portal edition of the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. Um, thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. Make sure to check out. The Ultimate College Football Preview 2021, local experts, betting advice, and draft analysis, the most comprehensive college football preview begins, well, tomorrow, 
actually. So tune in for that. Um, I've put the feed um, <coughs> in the in my timeline on Twitter. And that way you can get to it as, as it says. So the first part of the show, we touched on Transfer Portal and what it is it and how does it set up and why is it so hard to lasso and get truth when it comes to the transfer portal. And we gave you those reasons in the first half of the show. Now we're going to start talking about um, a couple of transfer targets that Ole Miss has signed this, thus far. Um, the first one that we're going to talk about, Ole Miss got a commitment on Tuesday, on Tuesday, of Jordan Watkins from Louisville. Wide receiver, 5'11", 175, good player. Uh, he's 35 catches for 531. His average is at 15 yards per catch. He has four touchdowns this season. And a hey, pretty good player. Now, what I see happening, now this doesn't necessarily mean anything, but um, what I see happening is Ole Miss recruiting, um, recruiting outside receivers, as in through the recruiting class, the Braylon Browns, the Brandon Buckhalters, the you know those guys, and the inside guys like Jalen Knox and Jordan Watkins are being recruited in the through the transfer portal. Now this is probably bad news for somebody like John Rice Palmer. Let's just call it what it is. Um, I know he enjoys his time at Ole Miss and what's going on, um, but he might enter the portal himself in future weeks because there's a little bit of a hole that is developing at that position where it's going to be hard for him to get on the field. And I hate it for the kid, but it is what it is. Now, I tell people all the time, they're like, what type of fan are you? Why don't You have such a weird perspective when it comes to Ole Miss sports. And I do have a, I do have a different perspective because I am more of a program fan. I, I, I am a big picture fan. I'm not necessarily beholden to any individual moment, which means any individual moments kind of get washed off the back and they disappear fairly quickly. That's just the way I brought up, and that's the way I watch sports. I mean, Ole Miss at 10-2, and two, I'm not going to focus on the two. I'm going to focus on the 10-2, and two, and what does that mean going forward? Everything's about going forward with me. It's not necessarily, as soon as that game's over, it's over. Now, part of that is I worked in that office. So I handle games real similar to the way they handle games. And I've seen how, what actually happens. And I understand what needs to happen to build it. So I look at fandom in a certain way. And whenever you have something like the transfer portal, it's really helpful to look at fandom that way. Don't be a prisoner of the moment. Don't, don't set it such a small window. Big picture it especially with the transfer portal. Now, Jalen Watkins, like I said, 12 um, games played last year, 35 catches, 531 yards, four touchdowns. Good player, nice numbers. He had a good season. That's why he entered the transfer portal. Um, He's probably wasn't getting um, what he wanted with Malik Cunningham at quarterback. So he transferred to um, potentially a higher up competition, you know, the SEC West is no joke, but, I mean, we'll see what he looks like. The other player that Ole Miss has gotten in the transfer portal thus far is Ladarius Tennyson. He's um, played two years at Auburn. He's 13 and 14 tackles, 21 total both years. Uh, I'm looking for TFLs. And I don't know if this is absolutely correct because I know for a fact he got a TFL this year. Um, so it's not 100% correct, but he's a posi- person that is going to be in the Otis Reese role whenever you deal with that. 
And it'll be real interesting to see what he plays. He's a hyper-aggressive run defender. He's going to be a Jake Springer, Otis Reese, like I said. That's what he's being recruited to do. Uh, Now, at Auburn, he was probably recruited to play a little bit further back and do things that are um, probably not in his top skill set. To his skill set, Georgia asked that of Otis Reese before he transferred here. Um, Jake Springer, all-conference player at Navy, was asked to do different things than he was asked to do at Ole Miss. It's the the beauty of that 3-2-6 and the flexibility that it allows for defensive backs. But you can see from the portal, these are players that are good players, and you can see exactly how they're going to fit in. But they might not have fit in where they were. It's not that you're getting leftovers or um, players that are overlooked over there because there's not one style of football. There's multiple styles of football. And because of that, you really have a chance to um, be pretty special and improve your station and life at Ole Miss. It's pretty cool. All right, Bet Online has you covered all season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football can send, can use its march to the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for sports action all this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2021. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. All right. Um, today has been the portal episode of um, Locked On Ole Miss podcast to explain to you exactly how this is a little bit of a different animal and not one that people are used to covering. Same thing with NIL. People record, cover NIL, but they act like it's extra money. This is different. It's this part of the same pot. You have twenty thousand dollars to give. You're going to give twenty thousand dollars, whether it's the NIL or the school. So you were already given that money. This isn't extra money. So with the transfer portal, this isn't necessarily going to be covered just like recruiting, and because of that. It is going to be a little bit different. And you look at quarterbacks. Now, one fact that we know about the transfer portal is that Lane Kiffin called Cam Ward 30 minutes after he entered the portal. That feels relevant. But everything else, every other name we've heard, it's not really anything there. Haven't heard anything. So, tomorrow, um, we're going to do a Sugar Bowl preview show real quick. Hope you tune in for that. It'll be a replay of Monday's um, Sugar Bowl preview with Josh Neighbors. But we'll talk for like 17 minutes about that. There'll be a little bit of stuff before and after. Uh, but it's something on Christmas Eve just to keep you going a little bit. So hope you tune in for that. Anyway, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. Um, tomorrow we will do a Super Bowl or Sugar Bowl preview. Now make your second listen Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q, with an expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms yeah tune in for that but anyway um tomorrow sugar bowl preview again we're going to replay that and by all means everybody have a really merry christmas take care